Well, hey, let's try that again. This time I have a jumper battery on there and we tried to graft this compressor and that's real life. And this time the alarm actually did. I hear some solenoids in the doors. So we now have power to start the vehicle. So we'll be able to do this. So low side pressure, high side pressure. Vehicle has just been charged, never been started. This vehicle has been sitting here for, let's see, I recovered this vehicle last month. Yeah, it's about, 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 about a month. All right, here we go. We're still low, high fan speed. Recycle, I wanna go for the coldest, the fastest I could get it. One, two, go. Let's see what happens here. How long does it take to engage? There it goes, boom, you see that jump? High side's going up, low side's going down. We are now grafting the compressor. This is a variable displacement compressor. Our RPMs are steady at 1100 RPMs. Now we just drop down and we're dropping and dropping until it probably dropped down to eight or 900. But even though the RPMs are dropping down, the high side is still going up. You go, how can the high side still go up if the RPMs are going down? Because the faster a compressor spins, the more pressure you can make. But remember, this is a variable displacement compressor. It doesn't care about the RPMs. What it'll do is it'll take that swash plate when it was at 2000 or 1200 RPMs, the displacement was just a little bit. It was just moving the pistons back and forth a little bit. But when the RPM went down and the compressor becomes less efficient, it hits that actuator solenoid valve and uh, it kicks the swash all the way open. So now it has a high displacement. So it still can displace refrigerant at the same efficiency and why is the pressure going up so high again 280 hey we got another car like this okay it's it's going to, ah there it goes 200 and look at the fans just came on right there you could see exactly where 295 psi was when the fan came on so you just got to see the fan kick in i don't even have to be out there in the hood you could be the owner, the manager, or the senior technician monitoring your guys from a desk inside the office, and you can be looking at several displays while all your technicians have your field piece gauges and sensors hooked up. You can monitor all your young guys who are not inferior and look for their problems. You know, you have those guys, sometimes they lie a little bit about how cold they say it just so they can pump it out and they can make that, they're going for that bonus or something like that and they don't tell you the truth that there's a problem. Well, this could have been a problem and they won't even mention it because that'll slow, they can't get another car because they're on a bonus program. And this is what bonus programs do sometimes. The truth kind of gets fudged a little bit. And how cold do they get? Or, or, well, this is PSI. How low did the PSI? It's, it's cruising around there about 24, 26, 26, 27. So right now, the compressor is holding right about there. Let's go look at temperatures. What's our temperature? Let's get up here. We're coming out 42 degrees out of the dash right there. And you can graph that for your customer. Start that graph. Take this recording, add it to your sales slip, your receipt, your invoice, whatever you want to call it, and prove and document on every vehicle how it came in, how it goes out, and you have live data streaming while the vehicle's in operation. Let's see where it's our temperature at. We're at 41 degrees right now. Now let's watch what happens with this variable displacement compressor when I give it some RPMs. So let's go back. Let's go. Okay, here we go right here. I'm gonna give it a little gas. So let's look at, uh, there's our tack. Here's our pressures. Let's see if we can get that all in the background. No, maybe I can't. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. I'm gonna try it. Uh, nothing's turning out really good. I'm gonna try to hold it about 1500 RPMs. So we all know standard displacement fixed piston displacement compressors if I gave if I wind up the compressor the high side's going to shoot up the low side's going to shoot down because it's a fixed piston dispressor compressor right well let's find out okay a thousand 
1500 yeah, right about there oh my god it's broken the compressor is not reacting it's supposed to shoot up oh my god look at your low side it's staying steady as a rock Zoom out. This is the difference between fixed piston compressors and variable displacement compressors. Do not try to charge by pressures. Do not try to charge by temperatures. Do not try to charge by duck dash temperature. Do not try to charge by beer can cold because there's other things you don't know about that are taking place in a computer that is telling the compressor to do something a little funny. And I could take out half the refrigerant charge and just about to get the exact same pressures and temperature out the dash right now under these ambient conditions. So if you have a boss who tells you to charge by pressure or temperature on a variable displacement compressor or variable speed compressor that's being operated and told what to do by sensors or superheat or subcooling, tell him to go fuck himself. And uh, not really because you'll lose your job and you don't want to lose your job. You just have to grit your teeth, go out there, read books, learn, and fire your boss and go get a job somewhere else or open up your own business. Don't listen to a pile of shit who doesn't know what he's doing because remember, once you get good, you are making your boss money. Your boss isn't handing you a paycheck. You give him the funds to pay you some money. It's up to you. And if you cannot make yourself better so you can at least educate your boss and make it so that both of you can make money together, you need to hightail it out there, start your own business, educate up, or go work for somebody better who will pay you better for the knowledge that you acquire. And make it on, and if you're working for a cheap ass boss, use him up, use his dollar, make your mistakes at his place, and since he's a cheap ass SOB, as soon as you get good, quit and go to somewhere better. And he'll always say, oh, my guys keep quitting. Yeah, because he's a sack and excrement that doesn't pay his guys worth a shit and he ain't worth a sack of excrement because he cannot get out there and train you as a young, inexperienced technician who needs guidance. If he cannot guide you and pick your level up, he need not be sitting behind that seat gathering money off of your hard earnings, your blood, sweat, and tears so his ass can cut a little percentage back to you as a paycheck. Brain up, guys. Use your brains. Use that gray matter between your ears. Go back to school at night and stop being a wrench. That's just nothing. They call you grease monkeys, okay? Do you want to be a grease monkey? Educate yourself. All right, see you guys.